we are coming to you live from the Adelaide Hills to bring you this special bike review edition. The second time I've ever reviewed a bike on this YouTube channel because it's the second bike I've bought since I've had the channel. So that explains that. But I will be answering the questions that a few people have been asking why I bought a Harley Davidson, why specifically I bought the Harley Davidson 72 model and other answers to questions that haven't been asked yet and may never be asked, but I'm going to answer them anyway because that's the kind of person I am today. But first, before we get into anything, let's take a look at the exterior, the all-important exterior. And Harley-Davidson are one of the only manufacturers left in the world that pour an incredible amount into attention to detail. They still let their designers almost run free and design whatever they feel like designing. They have true artists in that company. And... Uh, Unlike other manufacturers around the world, we're talking cars and bikes here, they don't have the bean counters above them telling the designers, no, you can't do that, no, 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 whenever they come up with something really good. So the, the design work and the attention to detail, the, um, the ornate features, the, the little signature logos here and there, the chrome work, it's so spot on. It's, if you've seen my previous video, I talk about how it's, this particular model depicts the late 60s, early 70s chopper bike culture that was a happening thing all over the world, not just America at that time. And uh, it really captures the essence of that time period and I obviously think it was a sensational point in time even though I wasn't born then. But I, I love the styling cues of that era. I've never had a cruiser before. I've never even ridden one before. Now, I didn't take a camera with me on the day I test rode this bike because it would have looked like, I don't know, a baby giraffe trying to stand up for the first time or a dog on a tiled floor. It would have been awkward. It would have been cumbersome. It, it probably would have been a good for a laugh, but I knew it was going to be not the prettiest thing in the world. Anyhow, that day I first threw a leg over this thing. I knew full well that it was 250 kilograms. Now I've come from, as I mentioned earlier, a Ducati Panigale which weighs in at 169 kilograms. There's quite a bit of weight difference there. I weigh 92 kilograms in bike gear. So if this thing falls over me, it will crush me to a degree anyway. There's always that in your mind. You know when you go to test ride a bike, you always imagine the worst possible scenarios, don't you? So there I am. I throw a leg over this thing and it's a this uh, dealership is on a very busy road. There's teeny tiny little back streets with roundabouts every 30 metres down the road. So I'm like, where am I going to test ride this thing? It's, it's, it's going to be a little tricky. Anyhow, I get on it. I let the clutch out. Right away, the, the forward foot controls. Forgot all about them and I go to put them in my sports rider position. And my legs are flying everywhere and it just looks ridiculous. But after no less than 30 seconds into the ride, you start thinking to yourself, this, this is feeling really good here. This is so easy to use. You go a bit further down the road, another minute passes and you're riding it like you've been riding it forever almost. With the exception of when I did come up to those roundabouts and I go to tip it into the side, obviously it requires a lot more effort. Well, I should say a lot more effort, but more effort than a super sport bike to get it into a lean. But once you've, your brain's worked out that it is possible, and that the laws of physics apply to all motorcycles, doesn't matter what brand, what size, it will work. It will go around the corner and you can do it. And, uh, and anyhow, long story short, I ended up really liking the test drive and I bought the damn thing. So now here we are doing this review video. So why did I buy it? What's so good about it? Other than the aesthetics, the looks and appearance, the metal flake, hand painted paint jobs on these things. Of course you've got to pay a bit extra for that but it's well worth it in my opinion. I like the bit of uh, the uh, show-off nature of the bike I guess you would say. The uh, chrome work with that metal flake paint job it is something else to look at. It really is, a, really is a peach. And it's not just me here banging on about how good the bike looks. I've had that many people at intersections and on the footpath or something scream out and uh, the thumbs up that sort of thing when you go by them. It's a bit astounding. I thought coming from a Panigale, which in my mind is the greatest looking sports bike ever made, you know, I, I would have seen it all as far as reactions go from people in cars and on the side of the road. 
there's a lawyer's office that I go past on the way to work in the city and uh, there's a, a fellow just come out of the store or the office and he sort of like smiled and nodded obviously liked the look of it no less than 10 meters down the road there's a homeless guy with his shopping trolley full of cans and blankets and things and he screamed out loved it put his thumbs up and that was less than 10 meters apart and less than 30 seconds apart you get two people from different walks of life loving this bike it does handle plenty good and it is it is down to the skinny tires that are on this thing to depict the uh, late 60s early 70s chopper era where they all had skinny tires back then so it's easy to tip one side to the other you can't get that low on it obviously because it's not a super sport bike anymore but you can get plenty low enough to have a good time going around corners on this thing you will still have a good time and i was led to believe you can't have fun going around corners twisty roads on the harley it's not it's not their not their thing not their forte that's a bit of a misnomer you can't get as low but you can still have a, a good time and you will be looking for twisty roads uh, when you have one of these things do and you will enjoy them brakes on this thing this is not an abs model now all the bikes previously i had abs option on them and i was a bit wary of this thing not having it on there but the brakes have such good feel they're not the strongest brakes in the world but you really have to be doing something crazy or silly to lock them up i haven't locked them up once i've been on hard on them hard uh, they have plenty good feel and uh, i feel safe as a house on the on this thing Reliability played a huge part in me buying this bike as well. I had plans to ride to work every single day again. Uh, what is it, a 32 kilometer round trip every day. I was gonna ride on the weekends again, for pleasure and you know, you wanna go someplace on the weekend. Also, not just reliable, I wanted the service cost to be super low. And I wanted to have to do next to nothing to maintain the bike. Not really a mix of just a fix it guy. I'm a Mr. Ride of Guy. I like the aesthetics of the bike. I like riding the bike. Don't really like tinkering all that much. This bike is perfect for that. Why? Because the service history, uh, the reliability on this particular Evo motor, which all these sports and chassis bikes have, the 1200cc Evo motor, has a superb reputation. A lot of people say 100,000 miles, no problem at all, you'll get from these engines before a reboot or a replacement is possibly in order. And that's uh, in the motorcycle as well, that's the sensation that's about as good as it gets. Uh, only manufacturers like Honda or something like that can rival those sorts of figures. There's no valves on this thing, so there's no valves that are going to need a valve adjustment, obviously, so that's great. So there's no service costs there and chain lube, chain tightening. Well, that's non-existent for me anymore because this is a belt drive. Isn't that fantastic? So, yeah, no lubing or worrying about it getting dry and adjusting that. It's got plenty of power. I mean, this has all the power you need for the street. Uh, for what you need and what you use, this has plenty of power. You won't get into trouble with the power on this thing unless you're really abusive with it. It does have a very long first gear. So that's, you're not going to fall off the back of it when you twist the wrist too hard. But you can and will break the speed limit no problem at all. You'll trash a, a car in a straight line, if that's your thing. It is, it is really a nice balance of power and torque. The sound of this thing, oh my goodness. Right from idle to red line and everywhere in between, this thing sounds perfect. A lot of guys on Harleys, I don't know about where you guys live, but there's plenty of guys running straight through fronts, and you can, they're overkill really. It's, it's too loud then and it doesn't, it takes away the, uh, the melodic music of the machine. The Screaming Eagle pipes, spot on. I mean, obviously they're not the only pipes you can buy for this bike, but I'm more than happy with them. The clutch, the clutch on this thing is super light, way lighter than the Ducati very easy to use and the shift action while it does have that sig signature uh, mechanical clump when it goes into gears it's reassuring you know it's gone into gears then it's not difficult to use at all it's each gear is 
simple, it's very sweet to find. There's no, you'll never miss a gear on this bike. Anyone who's anyone can find a gear and go up and down the gearbox, no problems at all. It's so user friendly. I was blown away in that test ride. The light clutch with that easy to use gearbox. Really impressive. I was, I was really blown away on that test ride. What a easy to use, easy to ride motorcycle. Obviously the ride position on this thing's a big turn on as well. You've got your feet slightly out stretched forward. You can adjust them if you want more space. Uh, there's uh, plenty of uh, service options in dealerships to have your bike tailor fitted to you. This is the stock position for me because, uh, well, coming from a super sport bike, everything's going to feel comfortable. And uh, the upright seating position, the bars right about the perfect height. Now in front of me here we have the peanut fuel tank. Not the biggest fuel tank in the world, but it, styling wise it perfectly fits the theme of that 60s and 70s chopper and bobber era. So how can they not use it of course? It has ruffled the feathers of a few uh, riders and people that have bought this bike and the similar bikes in that it holds, what was it, 7.9 litres, which is a teeny tiny amount considering we've got 1.2 litre engine, 1200 cc's to power. What do I think of that? Well, we've got what is it, about 150 kilometres per tank. So it's not a major distance of travel. And uh, there's plenty of people that have gone and got a bigger tank, put it on their machines. But styling wise, this fits the theme perfectly. I love it. I love the paint job, I love the size of it everything like that. So how I, how I get around it is I have a, uh, a fuel tank sitting at home. So on the cheap petrol day, the petrol cycle where I come from, so some days it's a lot more cheaper than others. I'll go and fill up the tank and have it sitting at home. So after I've come back from work or a ride day, what have you, I don't have to go stop off at a service station and fill up. I just come home, there's petrol waiting for me, I pour it in. Uh, I get around it that way and it's really no problem at all. It would be a hassle with where we are in this part of the world, you've got to take your helmet and gloves off every time you fill up your bike for security reasons. And that's just annoying, isn't it? So when you come home, you take your gloves and helmet off anyway. And if I've got petrol there, I just put that in the tank and no problems. And if I go for a long ride, you know, eventually after your 150 k's limit, you want to stretch your legs a little bit anyway, don't you? So I'll just pull over, fill it up again and on my way I go. So from that aspect, it's really uh, not a downside at all. And uh, the styling of the tank is integral to this bike, in my opinion. The dash gauge right in front of me here is part analog, part digital. When you go through a tunnel or into your shed at home, the lighting on it will change. Uh, it's got a sensor in there. It's got your got plenty of technology on this bike even if it is the old style engine and gearbox that many people know and love this there's, there's technology on here and it's uh, really really good I mean this the ride quality on this thing it does have a two inch suspension travel in the rear there which plenty of people I've read in other reviews say it's it's not enough it's got a little bit of a bumpy ride it's rough but from what I've come from again, a super sport bike, this is a damn Cadillac by comparison. This is a cushy, cushy comfort ride machine. Oh, it's, it's, it soaks up the crusty roads, no problem at all. But again, that's relative to where I've come from. If you've just stepped off a Harley Softail or an Indian Chief Classic, something, something along those lines, this thing probably does feel like a go-kart jarring your spine and rattling your teeth out. So yeah, it all depends on where you come from, but it's, it's no problems at all for me. It's very comfortable. I've had two people on this bike on two separate occasions of different sizes. Oh, actually, they were both quite fit. All right, so the sizes weren't that different, but they had a great time sitting on the back here with me. I had no problems riding them around. It's just fun for everyone. It is very easy to get an ego when you ride these sorts of bikes. You feel like a million dollars when you're riding it. It's the whole sense of freedom and uh, you can go anywhere and everywhere whenever you feel like it. The bike's always going to be there. It's reliable. It's going to back you up. It, every time you push the button, it fires straight up again. You just want to ride it more and more when you've done a road trip. 
just want to get back on it and keep going. The road's twisty, the road's straight, hilly, flat. It does it all. It's, it's really very versatile and uh, what an easy to use bike. I was blown away by how easy it was to use. I'd read so many horror stories on the internet. It's so clunky and agricultural and it's a man's bike. You've got to be muscular and strong. You need to throw it in here to get it to lean over and, and all this sort of thing. And what utter garbage. It is so user friendly. It is incredibly rewarding to ride. And I've really ridden the wheels up and I've had it for a while now and it's shown nothing but utter reliability and uh, respect. I give the bike respect, it gives me respect back. It still shines and gleams. Oh, what, a, what a great time I've had riding it. Doesn't matter where you take it, it's always a fun adventure. No regrets at all. What a, what a tremendous experience, it's a tremendous ride. The freedom, the comfort, the sound, the power, the low end power, the torque, it's all there. It's all in this wrapped up in this sensational package and what a time to be alive. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we'll see you guys next time.